All right. Thanks again, everybody, for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. So my uh, uh, question that I um, was asked to answer is, what are the new thoughts on giving plasma to foals? And so those of you that know me know that I'm a big fan of, uh, of plasma um, in the neonatal foals. And um, we'll kind of just review um, what kind of where our current thinking is regarding this. So um, advantages of IV plasma administration, a lot of you are familiar with it, but it, just if you're not, um, obviously it provides some immunoglobulins in the failure of passive transfer, so those mares that drip out all their colostrum or the foals that are too sick to absorb it, we can uh, replace that um, using plasma. It kind of increases the volume of the vascular space and, and gives them better perfusion as well, kind of gives some of these foals that need a boost. Um, you know, even before we know that they need a boost, it can give them a little bit of a boost. Um, hyperimmune plasma, for those of you not familiar with it, I'll go through it um, a little bit more um, here in a little bit, but can provide extra protection against endemic diseases specific to your particular farm. So diseases that you're having a problem with, um, it can help these foals fight that. Uh, currently, no rhodococcus equi vaccine is available, and the hyperimmune plasma is sort of the only USDA-approved um, you know, well-established um, way of uh, reducing the uh, uh, clinical incidence of the R. E. Qui pneumonia. Um, real briefly, disadvantages, obviously the cost um, and the risk of anaphylaxis. So um, just my PSA, no re milk replacer prior to IV pr plasma administration because it, uh, the bovine antibodies in the milk replacer um, the foal has a, a reaction to that as well. So just remember that. This little nugget was born this morning and it's already a, a fan favorite at the farm here. Um, so just briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the hyperimmune plasma is plasma taken from donors that are vaccinated for these specific pathogens. And the vaccination produces an immune system uh, response in the donor that then results in um, them making these antibodies against these specific particular diseases that we're looking for. So the plasma is then taken from the donors and then administered most commonly to neonatal foals um, to help provide them with extra immunoglobulins to fight uh, these diseases that we're worried about. Um, real quickly, common pathogens is targeted with uh, the HI plasma. Um, there's my sidekick, um, Morgan, my tech, who runs most of the plasma in these foals, um, bless her heart. Uh, Rhodococcus, Salmonella, Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium difficile, rotavirus, um, but really the majority of the research has been focused on the R. E. Qui. Uh, hyperimmune plasma. So real briefly, some of the research that's been done um, here locally at Gluck a few years ago, 2016, real nice study um, showing that the hyperimmune plasma decreases the pneumonia severity um, after um, experimental challenge. So they actually put rhodococcus into these foals and, and challenged them. Some of them had um, received the plasma, some of them had, hadn't. And just real briefly, a summary, it, it did work. It, the ones that got the, the plasma um, uh, had less disease than, than the ones that didn't. Um, another very recently published study demonstrated that two liter transfusion is superior to one liter. Um, the original studies done with the hyperimmune uh, rhodococcus plasma were done in pon pony foals, which were only about 25 kgs, and most of, most of our thoroughbred foals are about 50. So really, we should have done um, we should, probably should have been doing, using two liters all along, but um, the, the summary of that, just more is better. Um, so clinical applications, what's your optimal blend for your farm? You kind of have to decide, um, you know, more equi R equi is better, obviously, but we find that some of these GI blends are very helpful um, as well. So, um, so you sort of have to decide what's the most important thing to target on your farm and how can you use your, your plasma blends most efficiently. Um, so in order to do that, the GI testing can be very important. That we um, have PCR panels that we do on some of these neonatal diarrheas that can help us target which plasma to use. So, and then you have to decide whether or not IV versus oral is better. So the future of hyperimmune plasma, um, real briefly, uh, in the interest of time, uh, current research involves a new rhodococcus equi vaccine. It's called PNAG plasma, polyanacetylglucosamine. Polysaccharide um, is expressed on the surface of this 
Rhodococcus um, bacteria, as well as many other bacteria. So it's very promising um, as to maybe prevent some other diseases as well. And so it just contains a frag, the vaccine contains a fragment of this PNAG um, attached to a Tetox um, vaccine. And it's essentially specific to the PNAG, but not R. E. Qui itself. So um, the problem is that this won't be commercially available for years. So what can we do? Um, uh, in that. So a recent study showed that this PNAG plasma from donors vaccinated with this um, PNAG vaccine was significantly more effective than regular R. E. Qui, um, hyperimmune plasma. Um, but that was in vitro, that was in the lab. And so we need more in vivo trials that use PNAG. Um, and so our involvement, we're participating in a clinical trial that's investigating if this PNAG hyperimmune plasma is truly superior to R. E. Qui hyperimmune plasma. And preventing subclinical um, RE Chi pneumonia. And this is um, the group out of Texas, Dr. Cohen, um, who've done so much um, research and we're forever indebted to them um, on this disease. Um, so between Lexington and Saratoga, we've got about 150 foals and they get two liters of either PNAG or regular um, rhodococcus plasma and we administer it day, day one and we just monitor these foals for clinical signs of disease and then um, subclinical using our screening at, at maybe 30, 60 days, whatever the farm normally does. So, but what's interesting is it's a blinded study and so only MG Biologics, the plasma company, knows which type it is. See, Dr. Cohen doesn't know, we don't know, nobody knows except MG. So, um, so it's gonna be interesting, but um, currently not commercially available, so don't call your plasma company and ask for it yet, but, um, but hopefully um, soon. So um, in conclusion, you know, hyperimmune plasma um, is still um, an effective tool in preventing disease in, in our neonatal foals, and, and we're constantly doing research that is continuously supporting this, and so there are some exciting advancements kind of on the horizon, so.